that under Prime Minister Modi, India has found its way again. India is a voice mm. that is heard. Everyone may not agree with us, right. but it is a void heard with respect across, uh, across binaries. Hello and welcome to Strat News Global. I'm Nitin Gokhale. India has been in the center of a peace effort uh, between Russia and Ukraine. And as uh, fast-moving developments uh, show, uh, it is going to be an uh, effort that will take some time, some doing, uh, to get uh, both sides come together and uh, have some substantive talks. But at least uh, this is the beginning of India playing a bigger role in international or global affairs. And to discuss uh, what does this mean and why this change of approach, uh, I have with me uh, Mr. M.J. Akbar, uh, one of our foremost thinkers, authors, also uh, a former editor and still an editor in some senses, but uh, somebody who uh, actually looks at things very differently and has an out-of-box approach to most of the things. So, welcome to this program, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Nitin. So, uh, you know, the most obvious question is India has never uh, been comfortable of being a mediating party between warring factions anywhere. Uh, what has changed and why is India doing this role? No, I mean, sorry, but who told you India has never been comfortable? <laughs> I mean, uh, the foreign policy do, establishment says that. The foreign policy establishment, uh, whoever within the establishment says it, yeah. must be illiterate. That's right. Because then That's they right. don't know what India did in Korea. Right. Well, that, that, of course, in the 50s. Then, yeah. I yeah. mean, so why do you say never? Correct. Huh. Right? Yeah. The fact that uh, India mm. lost its way mm. because of a variety of reasons. Right. I'm not uh, yeah. attributing one single reason. Sure. History is rather more complex uh, than, than, white, yeah. than statements mm -hmm. made by X or Y, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is that under Prime Minister Modi, India has found its way again. India is a voice mm. that is heard. Everyone may not agree with us, right. but it is a void heard with respect across, uh, across binaries. Sure. And that is uh, something that uh, I think Prime Minister is using. It all begins from what I would call uh, a element or a strong central plank of the Modi doctrine, mm -hmm. which is war is not a solution to the problems of the 21st century. Sure. And in fact, if you look at it uh, in the historical perspective, mm -hmm. the, once the nation state emerges as the principal building block mm -hmm. of international stability, then wars, which are really a function of empires and expansion right. and influence peddling or m more important, actual domination, right. wars become irrelevant. Now, this yes. is the theory. Yes. In practice, as we know, they are not irrelevant. Not irrelevant. But uh, uh, an important international voice like the Prime Minister will do his best in order to minimize, if not uh, eliminate mm -hmm. war yeah. as an option. Now, we are today in this uh, third decade of the uh, uh, of the 21st century. Yes. We are facing a situation. Uh, by the way, wars have uh, no geography. Of course not. Wars yeah. begin have a conflagration impact, which we can spread. Now, look at not at the Ukraine war from the perspective of only Russia and Ukraine. Uh, I ask you yes. I ask you a simple question. Mm -hmm. How far is Ukraine from Caucasus? Two hundred kilometers. That's right, absolutely. Two hundred. So, yeah, exactly. Where is North Caucasus, yes. South Caucasus? Yes. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And from there how far is Syria? Yeah. So it is a continuum. Uh, how far is Syria from Uthis? Right. Yeah, and uh, just in case uh, there was not sufficient awareness, right. no, uh. Israel to hai hai. Uh. the insufficient awareness, the Indian Navy is operating there. Of course it is, yeah. So the war has already come to our shores. Right. Yeah. Therefore, even in the pursuit of our natural interest, mm. that means to prevent the conflagration from reaching our shores, it is imperative that we stop the conflagration at the th two or three major sources. That's right. Ukraine being one of them, not the only yeah, one, yeah. but Ukraine being one of them. Yeah. And therefore, the initiative being taken by the Prime Minister mm -hmm. is an important one. Uh, I mean, uh, 
the whether it will succeed or not in fact is perhaps less important than the effort that is being made right. and that is what the change of approach like you mentioned prime minister modi is actually being proactive mm. uh, and this is a strategy which perhaps uh, in the olden times you you would say that you don't want war at your doorstep you want to stop the uh, you know wars effect much further yeah. away and that's uh, one of the reasons that you have already mentioned absolutely but the fact is that uh, india is also an acceptable voice uh, on both sides uh, yeah. Yeah. just taking russia and ukraine uh, as an uh, they as look an in if you want to become a bridge mm. yeah exactly right? right a bridge has to be stable at both ends both ends exactly <laughs> Otherwise, that's right yeah. the bridge doesn't work sure right mm. i i recall and mm. correct me if i'm wrong mm. but i recall uh, a suggestion made by uh, whoever that uh, india participate in one particular conference mm -hmm. on ending right. and the reaction was very sensible mm. that without moscow's participation there can be no i mean you are agreeing with who exactly so that is a one sided uh, unilateral kind of a conference that was number of them have happened from the western side yeah. of the ukrainian so side so the yeah. prime minister our yeah. prime minister has credibility at both ends That's right. and it's credibility because mm. uh, india has nothing but the desire for peace, peace. Yeah. exactly right mm. india is not a member of nato sure that it has a vested interest yeah, exactly. in success or victory for either side no. so india would seek a rational denouement mm. india would seek a, a reasoned an acceptable uh, perhaps compromise right on uh, both sides mm. certainly india would seek a solution that most important of everything else mm. is sustainable right mm. a peace that is not sustainable is more dangerous than war correct because then it can go back to square one it becomes worse worse exactly because the bitterness then increases in both sides absolutely but uh, the other issue that everybody now that russians especially some of the russian specialists and analysts keep talking about is uh, this time uh, particularly this particular months 3 4 months from now because the americans are in the middle of their uh, elections or election campaign uh, the uh, war is not going in the ukraine's favor so at that time who should russia talk to i mean the point is uh, is it uh, i mean they don't want to talk to zelensky obviously the russians so therefore now what does uh, how does america see this india doing this uh, you know mediation or peace effort do they accept india's role also what do you what do you think what's your assessment i don't think americans would accept mm -hmm. happily okay he may eventually accept yeah. mm -hmm. happily a situation where any third party mm -hmm. is a direct or indirect interference in their plans right okay. uh i don't think the ukraine president mm -hmm. can continue war for one more day <laughs> exactly. without the support uh, exactly. mm -hmm. of uh, america mm -hmm. now let's remember one thing about america that while american presidents uh, obviously have a great impact on policy the american state has its own dynamics and it's a continuing uh, it's a continuing thing and whoever becomes president right. will have to respond to the needs mm -hmm. of the american state i am not falling into the trap of calling it the deep dark no. state <laughs> and so it's on the state it's, it's a state it's a state, yeah. state has to have right. i mean india is a state so whoever has comes in government in india yeah. will have to pursue the indian interest as perceived Absolutely. in the best interest right. of india and so on so mm -hmm. i that the absence of presence of a president is perhaps l less important than people imagine it to sure. be yeah. i think if the american state now feels that it has exhausted the ability to confront mm. uh, moscow confront even putin yeah. uh, then it will have to find some point at which a ceasefire mm. begins to right. become a visible and evident reality right so that's what i think uh, even europeans would want it that way given what they are going through right now I, the europeans may want anything but the europeans Can't, are in you know, have a power to do anything they are a puff in the air that's right because they it's actually <laughs> the battle between russia and america yeah it's a, it's <laughs> a cold war which is getting warm in certain sectors right. by the way even if you look at the history of the cold war yes. 
it may have been cold in Europe, but it was very, very hot in Southeast Asia. Of course, it yes. was very hot in Angola. It was very hot in Africa. Right. It was very hot in Latin America. Course, you know, yeah. it, some so of us. Call it cold war. Yeah, uh, just it's some not of us. Uh, you don't uh, remember I and the. Of course. <laughs> and of so course. on in Nicaragua. No, so no, it's no. Uh, you know, uh, every cold war of Europe has heated dimensions elsewhere. elsewhere. And I think India has taken the right approach because uh, at a time when Indian economy is uh, doing well, it ought to do uh, sustain itself uh, for years together to get India to a position where we want uh, ourselves to be. So in that sense, uh, now what is the next step? Uh, we've had the and NSA I, going to uh, I think the most to Russia. Rather. Yeah, I think that was uh, well, the NSA's role mm. in the last, uh, I think for many months, frankly. Sure. Uh, for longer because the NSA has one tremendous advantage. Mm. He has the confidence of a mature person who can keep quiet. Right. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's very well put because in diplomacy <laughs> or these back channel talks you need yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. And you know, therefore the Prime Minister can trust him. Mm. The country can trust right. him. Uh, I think he's among the people now who has earned the highest respect absolutely. possible for a person who is a, a servant of the state. Correct. And uh, I think his role uh, has been, look at how things can change if a mature person mm -hmm. is handling it with, uh, with, under the leadership of the Prime Minister. Right. And under the leadership of the Prime Minister is extremely important because sure. without which obviously nothing functions. Of course. And, uh, so, it's not only his message to Putin, how many NSAs would say they have a, you know, access, a, a, direct, no, no, access. direct uh, conversation yeah. with the head of government, with the defense ministers, his meeting with Wang, yeah. the Chinese foreign Absolutely. minister, it led to the uh, disengagement on four sectors in Ladakh. Right. It has led to the re resumption of civilization. It has set the ground now for a possible meeting between Prime Minister Modi and President Xi, which will, I think, be yeah. quite important Very. at Kazan. Yes. If you look at our own situation in South Asia, right. to, today, after what has happened in Bangladesh, mm. I think uh, those in Bangladesh who may have been dreaming of investing in India-China hostility yeah. for their own benefit, right. today have received a huge setback. Absolutely. Huge setback. Because China and India together yeah. uh, will have a No, I mean, problem. we know the history of the Northeast. Correct. Exactly. We don't want to get and into the that. And who knows that better than NSA? Absolutely. He, was he has there. dealt with it. Yes, absolutely. Personally. Correct. So, too, I think that the Prime Minister has made, a, you know, his Prime Minister's wisdom is again very clear in the choice of the people who take the steps forward, the phrase that he used. Absolutely. And I feel that the country now is in mature hands. Uh, in, in these respects. So now the next step, as I can see it, is that now the Prime Minister will be traveling to the uh, U.S. for a number of uh, yeah. you know, appointments. He's not. Appointment. He's going to the U.S., not to the U.N. Not to the U.N. That's what I'm saying. To <laughs> yeah. the U.S. So there is a Quad summit, there is uh, this uh, yeah. other, other summit, the future of the... And United frankly, States. you know, the uh, very few, the new United Nations <laughs> increasingly reminds me of League of Nations. <laughs> In the 90s, before In the First World War. Uh, War uh, no, after, after the First, the first World War. Sorry. Yeah. After the First World War. It's War. just become a hapless organized. That's right. It's become mm -hmm. a hapless mm -hmm. elephant. Yes. Which does nothing except feed at the trough. Correct. Absolutely. Totally no, right. So it's a talk shop also. So he, uh, you know, so he's moved on. He's moved on. He doesn't go to and speak there. Speak Our there. Pakistani friends can go and do that. Do uh, all and that. And rant about yeah. uh, Kashmir and other You other don't do yeah. We don't do that. Yeah. But, uh, so I was coming to that next step that uh, now, obviously, this message will also go to or be carried to President Biden, uh, who is in office right now. That this is what happened between uh, Putin and uh, NSA when he went there. They had, had this chat. And they have carried the message from Zelensky to Putin and now Putin to Biden. So, do you think there is a movement forward uh, likely to happen on uh, these efforts? I can't predict how, no, the, how the American state yeah. and the White House will react. Right. But I would imagine that if they have concluded, mm -hmm. as possibly they should have, right. that uh, reversing a Russian advance mm -hmm. through war yeah. is uh, much going to be much more difficult 
than to finding a solution through peace. Right. Uh, then I think they would be well advised to use the Prime Minister's good offices. Mm -hmm. The Prime Minister has good equation with you know, uh, President Biden, yeah. uh, with uh, Americans. Uh, you see, the Prime Minister Modi's great advantage is that he has built goodwill everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, you see, years, yeah. over his 10 years, decade, over this Modi decade. And this goodwill, if it is not brought to bear upon the creation of peace, then of what use is it? That's right. Of course, it is of great use to India's own yeah, welfare and right. uh, India's own uh, future. But uh, India is a member and a responsible member, member of the international community. It is. And therefore, the Prime Minister is, uh, I think, what he would say well within his uh, arc of responsibility mm -hmm. to do what he can. That's right. Yeah, uh, the effort, like you said, is more important than you yeah. know, what happens to the yeah. outcome. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, one final uh, thought on this, that, uh, you know, three months, uh, three and a half months after, uh, I mean, four months now, it will be in October, the new government or the Modi 3.0, call it NDA, whatever this government has come, it's been a very busy time in foreign policy. Uh, so, uh, uh, as it looks, India is going to be busier as far as foreign policy is concerned, neighborhood, uh, responsibilities are there, there are these other responsibilities which are coming in. India needs to have a very nimble-footed foreign policy establishment and national security establishment. What would you uh, advise or uh, you know analyze uh, going forward? What should India be doing? Uh, advice is a word which is completely inoperative. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know you don't like it, but uh, okay, suggestions. <laughs> Not suggestions. I think the nimble-footed yeah. is very right. right. And I think uh, the Prime Minister is using uh, the most nimble mind mm. in his establishment, right. which is the NSA. Right. The uh, pace of activity and the ability right. to actually, uh, you know, uh, well, play chess with both hands. Mm. Exactly. is uh, both hands and a clear mind mm. yes. with a very clear understanding of objectives mm. is uh, something that the NSA, uh, Ajit Doval provides him with that tremendous asset. The Prime Minister himself is, uh, is very, very persuasive, you know, when he wants to be. And uh, his understanding of international affairs now is among the world's leaders. Yes. Is uh, is extraordinary. I, it's it's been, he's, he's endured. Uh, I mean, yeah. he's, uh, he's seen it. Ten years. Yeah, he's so seen it all. So many people have come and gone. Those who were in power in 2014, where are they Compare now? Compare them exactly. Where are he's, they he's now? seen three American presidents. Yeah. He's seen four. Probably Maybe Australian. only President Xi and Putin. Yeah, well, that's all. Yeah, <laughs> those three have actually lasted uh, the whole decade. The whole decade. And, and further. So that is how. But, uh, you know, uh, this is the uh, thing that most people don't see uh, the pattern in India's, uh, not, I mean, rise is a very cliched word. India's progress, India's development and how India's heft has increased in international uh, global affairs. Uh, it's precisely uh, driven by Prime Minister's personality and, of course, uh, his... India's influence mm. will always be a reflection mm. of India's internal strength. So stability. Make no mistake about that. Stability. The, the world will not recognize or respect mm. uh, an unstable or uh, an economically uh, deficient mm. country. A world will not respect a country which can't find its own future, right. let alone the world's future. Absolutely. So uh, the recognition that is coming in, implicit, explicit, mm. is also a recognition of the achievements. Right. India's achievements over 75 years right. uh, topped up by the achievements of the last 10 years. Exactly. A strength is mm -hmm. not a, you know, just the last phase of achievement. Yes. Of course. It is a it's built over the years. accumulation of uh, efforts made by every Prime Absolutely. Minister. Absolutely. Every Prime Minister. No, but the, see, this is the surprising part that at the, uh, on the election day, resu election results day, the uh, thought was that India is now going to be weaker, but it's business as usual as far as foreign and national policies are concerned. Right? The uh, country is, I mean, a government strength mm. is never measured only by the number of members of parliament. That's all. So, uh, that was uh, the... A uh, country's uh, strength is, mm. I mean, even your strength in parliament right. is measured by how good your governance is. Exactly. Mm. If you have bad governance, yeah. 
you can have over 400 seats we had, uh, and not be able to manage. <laughs> we have that example of Rajiv Gandhi's government. Yeah, but uh, yeah. there you are. So therefore, so that was my concluding thought that you know at that point on June 4th, a lot of people thought that now India's you know. I would make a suggestion, Nitin, if you don't mind. Tell me. Don't confuse India with Delhi. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I don't. I, 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 I'm hardly part of Delhi, but uh, uh, still. But the point is that all analysts actually you know, mocked. I think the Prime Minister said this in uh, today's mm -hmm. papers I was reading. He said, everybody mocked me. Everybody uh, said that now I'm finished. But in 100 days, today we are, we are recording this on the 100th day mm -hmm. of this government. And uh, it's not just business as usual, but more layers mm -hmm. have been added to the, uh, you know, uh, the complexities uh, which India is taking on. So that, on that thought, I let me conclude and thank you for your insights. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>